Hi students, in this video, I'm going to start with the third module. The third module mainly deals with the memory management. So in this module, we are going to discuss about the different topics related to how memory is allocated to the program, how the memory management is carried out by the operating system. In the syllabus, he has included about uh, contiguous memory allocation, non-contiguous memory allocation, paging, segmentation, segmentation with paging, virtual memory management, demand paging, virtual memory handler. Along with that, we are going to discuss uh, some of the page replacement policies. Also, we deal with the virtual memory management in Unix and Linux operating systems. So these are the topics we are going to cover in the third module, that is memory management. So in the today's class, we are going to discuss about the basics of uh, memory management. So first, uh, we are going to look at the topic static and dynamic memory allocation. So already in the first module, we have discussed about what is static resource allocation and what is dynamic resource allocation. But right now we are going to discuss about what is static memory allocation and what is dynamic memory allocation. So static memory allocation is one in which the allocation is performed before the program execution begins. Before uh, the program execution begins, the operating system is going to allocate the memory space. That kind of memory allocation, we call it as static memory allocation. So in case of static memory allocation, if the size of the program is unknown, it leads to wastage of memory space. Because without knowing uh, the program execution, we are going to fix up a fixed amount of memory allocation for a program. Okay. And uh, the advantage of static memory allocation is that there is no allocation actions during the program execution. That is, there is no overhead included while uh, allocating the memory space. Okay. So then we have dynamic memory allocation. This is the memory allocation scheme in which the memory is allocated during execution of the program. In this case, the memory is allocated to the program only when the program makes request for memory allocation. That's why it is called as dynamic memory allocation. In dynamic memory allocation, the allocation of memory is exactly equal to the size of the program. Therefore, there is no wastage of memory space in dynamic memory allocation. But however, the dynamic memory allocation includes some overhead during program execution. As the memory allocation takes place during execution of the program, some time is spent by the operating system for allocation of memory. So remember students, static memory allocation is one in which the memory allocation is performed during execution of the program. Here, the static memory allocation, it leads, to, it leads to wastage of memory space. But the advantage is that it is simple to implement and no uh, execution overhead during uh, the program execution. On the other hand, dynamic memory allocation is one where the allocation of memory space takes place during execution of the program. Here, as memory allocated to the program will be same as that of the requirement, there will be no wastage of memory space. Allocation overhead will be there as the memory allocation takes place during execution of the program. This is about the concept of static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation. So, in the next topic, we are going to discuss about memory fragmentation. 
So this is one of the very important concept in memory allocation. So actually memory fragmentation means it is unused memory space created while allocating memory to the program. While memory is allocated to the programs by the operating system, some of the memory space is wasted. This unused memory space, which is created while allocating the memory to the programs, we call it as fragmentation. Simply fragmentation, it refers to unused memory space, which is created while allocating memory to the programs. But however, we find two kinds of memory fragmentations. They are internal fragmentation and external fragmentation. The internal fragmentation, it arises when the memory allocated to the process is not completely utilized by it. Try to understand. The internal fragmentation, it occurs when memory allocated to the program is not completely utilized by it. So actually this kind of fragmentation occurs when the operating system allocates the memory of some standard size to the programs. Say for example, you assume that the operating system is allocating blocks of 100 kilobytes to a program. Assume that for every program, your operating system is going to allocate a block of 100 kilobyte. Suppose if you have a process P and if it requires only 60 kilobytes, what will happen? For this program P, the operating system has allocated 100 kilobytes. But however, this program P, it requires only 60 kilobytes. What about remaining 40 kilobytes? This remaining 40 kilobytes will be unused, right? This kind of fragmentation, we call it as internal fragmentation. So internal fragmentation, it arises when the memory allocated to the process or program is not completely utilized by it. So on the other hand, we have, we have external fragmentation. So actually this external fragmentation arises when the available memory areas are too small to be allocated to the programs. The external fragmentation occurs when the memory blocks are to be, when the memory blocks are too small to be allocated to the program or a process. Okay, let us discuss this uh, concept with an example. Okay, assume that uh, you have blocks of uh, 100 kilobytes. You have memory blocks of 100 kilobytes, right? And uh, now assume that uh, the program P1 and P2, they are allocated with uh, first memory block and third memory block. We have four memory blocks, each of size 100 kilobytes, right? We have program P1 and P2, which are allocated with the first block and the third block. In the same situation, if the process P3 arises, if P3 arises and if it requests for 150 kilobytes, now we cannot allocate uh, the memory to the process of size 150 kilobytes because we don't have contiguous space of 150 kilobytes. Of course, we have one block with size 100 kilobytes, another block with size 100 kilobytes. But right now we have a process P3, which requires 150 kilobytes of contiguous free memory space. In such situation, we can say that there is external fragmentation because we have the memory blocks, but these memory blocks, they are too small to be allocated to the program. Okay, so to overcome this, we use uh, a particular scheme or a method we use, call it as memory compaction. So basically memory compaction means bringing all the free memory space at one side. That is, 
shifting the allocated memory blocks to the program at one side and making all the available free space at other side. Uh, that particular concept we call it as memory compaction. So actually the kernel that is operating system, it periodically perform memory compaction to eliminate external fragmentation. Okay, here uh, we have an example of memory compaction. Just look at the example students. We have totally four processes, A, B, C, and D. We have four processes A, B, C, D in the memory, and we are left with a small free area space, which is shown with shaded portion. Okay, shaded portion indicates free memory block. Okay, and in this situation, you assume that the program B has completed its execution. The program B will complete its execution and here we get one more free memory block. Now, if you look at figure B, we have two free memory blocks. This is first portion we have and this is second portion we have. And now, suppose if a program E comes and if it requires more memory space, what can be done is the program C and D can be shifted immediately after program A. That is, the program C and D can be relocated. Relocated means uh, locating or shifting these programs to a new location, right? That concept we call it as relocation of the program. If you look at the third diagram, that is figure C, what has happened is, the program C and D, they are shifted immediately after the program A and we get larger memory space, larger free memory block, which can be allocated to the program E. This is how the memory compaction can be carried out and the unused memory space can be reutilized, okay? This we call it as memory compaction. Simply memory compaction means relocating the free blocks at one side so that the unused memory space can be allocated to other programs which are required. Okay, now, if you look at memory compaction, memory compaction, it includes uh, relocation of the program and for relocating, it requires a special register in the architecture called relocation register. Okay, students, in this video, uh, we have discussed the basic concepts of memory management. They are static and dynamic memory allocation. We have seen what is static memory allocation and what is dynamic memory allocation. Then after that, we discussed about what is memory fragmentation what are the types of memory fragmentation? And also we discussed about how the external memory fragmentation can be eliminated. That is, we discussed about the concept called memory compaction with an example. Please go through this video so that you can understand the basic concepts of memory management. Okay.